Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Hamdan kathiran tayyib mubarakan fi Kama yuhibbu rabbuna wa yurada Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika la Wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آله محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في عالمين إنك حميد مجيد أما بعد we continue إن شاء الله تبارك وتعالى by the permission and the will of Allah and His mercy and His bounty upon us with Kitab al-Jami' min Balugh al-Maram and Shaykh al-Islam al-Hafidh ibn Hajj al-Asqalani wa nasallahu tabarakum wa ta'ala and ghafr allahu wa an yujizihu an al-Islami wa al-Muslimin wa an yanfa'ana bihi tabarakum wa ta'ala we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to <coughs> shower his mercy upon the shaykh, forgive the shaykh for his shortcomings, to bless him for what he contributed, give him a great reward for what he <coughs> left for Islam and the Muslims. And we ask Allah wa ta'ala to bless us the benefit from it. Ameen. The last hadith we took, we still, believe it or not, we have some points and this hadith is a very interesting hadith because it has a lot of it a lot of principles that the ulama they bring out and they extract from this hadith a lot of very um, valuable lessons as it relates to how to understand more than one text when we say more than one text, we mean more than one verse, more than one ayah. How to understand more than one hadith that has the same subject matter. Also, from this hadith, we understand and we learn that which are characteristics of things that will indicate to you that something is a major sin or not. We also have from this hadith <clears throat> that which constitutes the aqidah of the Muslim, the belief of the Muslim, that the Muslim believes in the Jannah, the Muslim believes in the Paradise, that the Muslim believes in the Nar, the Muslim believes in the Hellfire, and that the Muslim believes in the Mashiach of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, Mashiach meaning in English, that Allah, He has wishes, Allah, He has wants, He has things that He desires, and that's what comes into play. That which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes and wishes and desires, He does. From this hadith, we also learn, Barakallahu Fikum, some of the qawait, some of the principles of some of the groups of innovation some of the groups of innovation from amongst the Muslims and many other great jewels that came from this hadith so we have some more principles tonight inshallah wa ta'ala and I'll try to review quickly um, what we took last class so that we can be on the same page and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for al-ikhlas or siddiq for sincerity and purity of actions for his sake and for his reward alone Subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hadith is the hadith of Ma'qil ibn Yasar. Ma'qil ibn Yasar. And this companion, he mentioned, he said, Submit to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul. He said, I heard the messenger of Allah say. So we understand from this that people used to narrate what they'd heard from the messenger of Allah. And then he said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ma min abdin. And we said here 
this yani ma in the arabic language has a lot of meanings you have yani that which constitutes negation ma nafi you have ma that constitutes yani masdariya that which is a a we call in english a verbal noun you have yani ma ajubiya that which shows excitement and something of of, of grandeur so there's many meanings to ma in the arabic language here this is ma yani uh, 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 that gives you negation of something just like you have la nafi the lamb that negates so here the prophet said ma min abdin there was not yani any app and we said app here has two meanings of shaykh islam <clears throat> ibn taymiyyah he mentioned in a lot of his treaties and many of the ulama <clears throat> before and after him that is abdun could either mean any human being that was created to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah said wa ma khalaqtu al-janna wal insa illa liya'budun and I have only created or I have not created the jinn nor the mankind except for one person one purpose except for one purpose in mind one goal one object and that is to worship me so app doing sometimes like they translate they mean they say bondman or the 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 yani the the yani um one who Allah tabarak wa ta'ala created to worship him subhanahu wa ta'ala whether that person submitted or not and this includes every human being muslim or kafir and then sometime apt is particular to the one who has submitted himself he has accepted the call of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala so here the prophet he said ma min abdin and here he's talking about the muslim and we'll see inshallah tabarak wa ta'ala what proves that the prophet he said ma min abdin there was not a servant or an individual <clears throat> that Allah has given him some responsibility or given her some responsibility ra'an yamuta yawma yamut wa huwa ghashun li ra'iyatihi wa huwa ghashun li ra'iyatihi illa harrama Allah alayhi al-janna Okay, my call in this hadith in Bukhari Muslim. So, Salam, the English meaning, there's no individual, there's no servant that Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala has given him some responsibility. As the Prophet said in the Bukhari and the Muslim, Kulukum ra'in, all of you are shepherds, all of you have responsibility. But Kulukum ra'in, an raya'atihi, and you will be questioned. You will be accountable for that responsibility. And then Prophet went on to mention the man, and he is the ra'a of his house, and, and he, his wife, his children, and the lady is the same thing, responsible over uh, uh, Beta Zojiha, her husband's house, and his children in her absence, and like this. So here, the point is Prophet in this hadith is saying there's no individual there's no servant that has been given the responsibility by Allah and then that responsibility that person dies Ghashun Ghashun and the ulama they say Ghashun means he did not uphold his responsibility like we say in English he's shucking and jiving he's not doing what he has the ability to do because remember everything in Islam is based on your ability and then the Prophet ﷺ said Yamutu Yama Yamut and he dies on the day that <clears throat> when he died and he was a person negligent when he or she had the ability to fulfill those obligations illa Haram Allahu alayhi al jannah except Allah will make harama here means you can't go. Harama here means prohibited. Illa except the penalty for not keeping your responsibilities purposely. 
Haram Allah alayhi al Jannah. Allah will make prohibited for that individual the Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us able and responsible and keep our duties to Him and fulfill our responsibilities. Amen. This hadith we mentioned is Bukhari and Muslim. And we said that it has many benefits. Where we will pick up tonight, as we will take it from the explanation of Imam Muhammad al Masalih al Uthaymeen and and the Imam Abdul Muhsin, Ibn Abdul Yani Muhsin Al Al Abad Al Badr, who's still alive in the Prophet's Masjid, Hafidahullah Ta'ala. The Shaykh he was asked, Shaykh Abdul Muhsin, what is the meaning of Wahu Shun? And so the Shaykh he said, Yani Mat Wahu Shun. He dies while he is yani ghashun, and ghashun is a uh, 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 action is showing that person is actually doing something at that time. What is he doing? He's not being responsible. He's being slick. Yani he's being deceitful. He's being negligent as it relates to fulfilling his responsibility. Then the sheikh he was asked, "Hal yushmal ab ma yani oladhi." Does this include yani, the father? <clears throat> and also it means the mother when it comes to your children. The Sheikh said, no. Nah. It includes the parents when it comes to their children. In other words, the parents can die and be under the threat of this hadith, not being able to go to the Jannah according to the literal word of this hadith because they did not fulfill their responsibilities towards their children. And we mean... Again, having the ability and you don't do it. Then the Sheikh he was asked, He said, does this also include if the father brings, and you have to remember, this question is asked before the time that we live in now. These 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 dros, were taught, you know, maybe five, maybe ten years ago on the Prophet's Masjid. They recorded. So, you know, maybe ten years ago, the big thing was satellite dish, especially in those parts of the world. Well, we might say, you know, okay, it's outdated, or some people have it here, some people don't. It's still a big issue in those countries. So he asked the Sheikh, does this include a man? And remember, Shun means your responsibility you're not upholding. From amongst the responsibilities you have to uphold to your family is that you have to make sure that you protect them from evil. That you yourself protect yourself by the permission of Allah from evil and you protect your family. So the sheikh was asked, what about a man who brings home a satellite dish and his children are watching all of these things from around the world on that satellite dish. Is he considered if he dies. Ghashun, somebody who. Failed to uphold his responsibility. Towards his children. The Sheikh said naam. The Sheikh said naam. Yes. And so now if we fast forward to. And I know this is challenging. Because <laughs> everybody's going to say. Well what should we do. I mean you know the kids have to have something. Or you know everybody has it. But you know we have all of these devices. You know, and what lie? Some things are not even being monitored. You know, the kids are playing all types of what. Yani, yeah, yani, yani. These are games. They say these are games. What kind of game? If the child is learning how to kill, shoot, police, the lady on the corner, yani, lady who's a yani, a prostitute. These are the games. You know. You know, pick this one off, you know. Yeah, so I mean, this is relevant to us whether we think it is or not because this hadith of Salam said, well, who are God shouldn't. I mean, he did not fulfill his responsibility. Haram Allah Jannah. Then this person will not I mean, be able to go to the paradise. So we mentioned the last time that if you look at this hadith, 
as some people have before some of the deviant groups like the group called the Murja'iyu. You would think that this hadith means that the person is going to be in hell forever. And so because the idea of the Muslim, if he has some sin and he repents or he's punished in the fire, eventually he's going to the paradise, then many people said from amongst those deviant groups before time, before our time, this hadith can't be applied to the Muslim because the Muslim is going to the paradise and the prophet said haram Allah al-jannah so they take the wording that's literal and they make it absolute but Sheikh Uthaymin he said this is a dangerous approach to this hadith because this opens the door to the Muslim that he can do anything like we say in Christianity they say we saved so if the Muslim thinks his shahada is going to guarantee him Jannah and he's never going to go to the fire then every time he sees the hadith every time he reads a hadith or ayat that says that person won't enter Jannah he's going to say oh that's not me that's talking about somebody who's a pagan a mushrik because I'm Muslim while this hadith we mentioned before the ulama they said it has two possible meanings when it comes to being prohibited from the Jannah. They said either A, you'll be prohibited from the Jannah, absolute. You'll be prohibited from the Jannah permanently. Who will be prohibited from the Jannah permanently? People who make what with Allah? Shirk, right? If you make shirk with Allah, Will you be admitted to the Jannah? If you make shirk and you die on that shirk. What is shirk? Somebody said partners. Association. Give me a physical example. Huh? Somebody who thinks Jesus is God. Very good. Give me another example of shirk. What about praying to Isa? Is that shirk? Anything that belongs to Allah, if you give it to somebody else, guess what? That's shirk. So your invocation, your prayer belongs, and it should go to who? Allah. So if you give it to Isa, you give it to an idol, you give it to Mary, you give it to the great sheikh who died 800 years ago, you give it even to Rasulullah. Is this shirk? Yes. Yeah, it's a shirk. Shirk. So the one who makes shirk and they die, let's get this straight, we said this last time, not just simply making shirk, but you make shirk, you make major shirk. Because remember, there's a major and a minor. Minor shirk, swearing by other than Allah. Swear on my grandmother's grave. I swear on a stack of Bibles. I swear on this old oak tree. I swear on this silver dollar. I swear on this rabbit's foot. Minor shirk. Major shirk to call on others with Allah and making dua. To think that something else is the reason that good will come to you and bad will be averted from you. Major shirk. Doing some action to reap a reward or benefit from someone who's deceased in the grave. Major shirk. So major shirk takes your Islam away. While minor shirk leaves you a Muslim, but it's still a big, a major sin. So major shirk, if you die on it, you cannot go to Jannah. So the deviant group, the Murji'iyu, they said, the likes of this hadith, for example, where the prophet said, that person will not enter the paradise. They said, this is only for the mushrik. It can't be for the Muslim. It's only for the mushrik, meaning the polytheist, the pagans. It can't be for the Muslim. Why? Because it said Muslims are going where? To the Jannah. But we know that there's 
another type of yani, not going to the paradise. And that is not going to the paradise right away. So we're the polytheists, the people, the Jew, the Christian, the Buddha, the atheist, the devil worship. All of these different groups that are clearly, if they heard about the message of, 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 of proper Islam, as many scholars said that, if they heard proper Islam and they rejected it, be insane, turned away and they die on major shirt, no Jannah. But the Muslim, if he does something that's punishable, then we said Allah wa ta'ala can forgive him. Then he will go to the Jannah without having to burn or do time in the fire. Or if Allah doesn't forgive him and he has to be punished for the crime, then he'll be punished, but he will be delayed in going to the Jannah. He will be delayed in going to the Jannah. Is that clear? Everybody understand that? This is very important. So now we said the opposite. This is the murji'i. The murji'iyu. They said everybody is going to Jannah. No meaning the Muslims. Every Muslim is going to Jannah. No Muslim will ever taste the fire because everybody, iman is the same. A man doesn't go up according to the murja iyu. Neither does it go down is one way. Once you accept Islam, your iman is here, therefore you go right to the Jannah. But we know that's not true. A man goes up, a man goes down. By many ayat in the Quran, by hadith of the Prophet, by the statements of the companions, by the statements of the ulama, we know a man goes up and it goes down. Therefore, if the Muslim, as Prophet said, when Zana, yani, when Sabaka, when Zana was Sabaka, even if he makes Zina, Adam Billah, even if he makes fornication, adultery, may Allah protect us. Even if he steals, they say, even if he does that, the Prophet said, yeah, he can go to Jannah. Meaning, if Allah forgive him, or if he do the time for that sin. Then he will go to the Jannah. So we know the other groups, like the Mu'tazila and the Khawarij, they take the opposite. They said, if a Muslim do ayyidan bin, any sin, then that Muslim will go to the hellfire forever. That's crazy, ain't it? And these are Muslim groups, again, that went astray. They said, Muslim do any yani sin. Waqafi ayyidan, any sin. Khalas. He's going to hell forever. That's the Khawarij and the Mu'tazila. These are the old groups of Bid'ah and they still exist. They like recycle some of the names and got different names and added different stuff to the original deviation but they still exist. But the real belief of the Muslim, the one who was from the people of the Sunnah, the way of the companions, we have to believe that the Muslim goes to Jannah. And the Muslim can go to the hellfire. But will the Muslim stay in the hellfire forever? No. The Muslim will either go straight to Jannah or he will have to make a pit stop in the hellfire first and then go to the Jannah. So this hadith, what's important about this hadith, again we said on face value, if a person does not fulfill their responsibility and they die purposely not fulfilling their responsibility and they had the ability and they weren't insane. According to this hadith, if you look at it, it looks like they'll never go to Jannah. So that's why it's important to know you can't look at one hadith. You can't look at one ayah. You have to take all of the evidence that's relevant to that subject matter. And that's one of the things we learned from taking this hadith. Also, Sheikh Uthaymin, he made two tremendous points that we don't normally hear. I think it's very beneficial. They use the ayat of Allah Tabarakul wa Ta'ala, Inna Allah la yaqfira an yushrika bih. Allah would not forgive you that you make shirk with him. 
But Allah will forgive whatever else to whomsoever he wills. This ayat is the ayat to show that a Muslim can be forgiven and even if he or she has some sins that causes them to be in the fire, they will not be in the fire forever. Because if Allah Azawajal chooses to forgive you, then guess what? You don't go to the hellfire. And if Allah chooses not to forgive you, but you have some sins that must be punished because of doing them, then we know that the Muslim will come out of the hellfire and go to the paradise. Like the hadith of the last man to come out of the hellfire. Anybody know that hadith? The last man to come out of the hellfire. He'll have a, he'll have a dark spot on his forehead. And every, that's everybody recognizes him uh, when he comes out. He's going to have that a dark spot on his forehead. Okay. What else? Um, oh, he's going to be... Wait, will he be burnt? He'll be burnt and then gradually he's going to disappear, but it's going to leave that mark and be like the end result. Yeah, he's going to be dipped in some special water to clean him and all of that soot and you know harm will be washed away but what's more pertinent from this story is that it's a proof that the muslim won't burn in the hellfire forever that's the point that we want to connect the dots the last man to come out of the hellfire is a muslim he did something allah chose not to forgive him out of fairness he did some sin that is punishable clearly he goes to the hellfire and then he keeps making dua in the hellfire to let me out let me out oh Allah let me out he's a believer he's a Muslim so now Allah Azawajal lets him out he's cleaned up washed with special water and now he's in the outskirts of the paradise those people that go to the hellfire, they're going to be in the outskirts. The outskirts. So this man is going to keep asking Allah, let me get closer, let me get closer. Because this is still a big area when you talk about outskirts. I'm going to keep asking Allah, let me get this tree, let me get shade under that tree. Allah is going to keep letting them, letting them, letting them, letting them. And then he said, if you let me get under this tree, that beautiful tree over there, I'm not going to ask no more. Then Allah let him go, and then he keep asking Allah again. Finally, in the hadith, Allah tabaraku wa ta'ala unveils himself. Where the man can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah asked him, in a jokingly way, but being serious. Is there anything else you want on my servant? Because remember, he kept asking Allah and said, if you let me get to that tree over there, oh, that one is more beautiful. If you let me get to this one, oh, wait a minute. You let me get to this one. Can I get to that one? He kept asking, kept asking. Said, I ain't going to ask you no more if you let me. Then Allah gave him something that's the greatest thing that any servant would want, to see Allah. Allah said in the hadith, the Prophet said, Allah is going to ask him on the day of judgment, is it anything else that you want? Imagine. Wallahi mathal a'la. Allah has the highest example. We can't bring him down to our level. But just imagine, for, for relative sake, you got children. They keep asking you. You give them something. You keep asking. They keep asking. You give them something. They keep asking. Tell him, okay, listen, I'm going to give you this, but don't ask you for nothing else. Okay, Abby. Give it to him. Can I have? <laughs> Say, boy, did I tell you don't ask for nothing else? You didn't have five candy bars. Then you give him his favorite toy. He wasn't expecting that. Remote control, chargeable. Stays charged for five days. Get that son that toy. Give that child that toy. Go and ask him. Now, what else you want? Anything else you want? What do you think he's going to say? He'll say, nope. 
So Allah asks that service in anything else that you want on my servant. Remember, he was in the hellfire. Then Allah let him come out. He's in the outskirts and he's looking through the gates of Jannah like, wow, look at that. So in order to get to the gate of Jannah, to get to the Jannah, you got to go through the courtyard. You got to go through the outskirts. So he's asking, can I get closer? Can I get behind? Can I get under this tree? Can I get up tree number this, tree number that? Get in his way, get in his way, get in his way. Then Allah let him see and tell himself. So there's anything else you want to ask for me or my servant. He said, how can I ask for anything else? SubhanAllah. How can I ask for anything else after seeing the beautiful face of my Lord? SubhanAllah. Can you imagine that, man? SubhanAllah. Tremendous. This hadith is and proof of a lot of things, including the believers will see their Lord on the day of judgment. But what's relative, the Muslim going to come out of the hellfire. Muslim not going to stay in the hellfire. No matter what he did, as long as he don't die on major shirk, major hypocrisy. We said major bid'ah, like grave worshiping. It's shirk, but it's still bid'ah because the Muslim invented this thinking it's making them get closer to Allah. So there's major bid'ah major hypocrisy of the heart, major kufr, like saying Jesus is the son of God, and major shirk, praying to Asa. Any one of those major sins, you won't go to the Jannah. So from this hadith, we learn that point. And Sheikh what they mean, he said that because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Allah hala and Allah will not forgive that you make shirk with him. The meaning Sheikh Uthay means says is not simply making shirk because that's what it says. But remember, the Quran is explained by other ayats in the Quran. Quran is explained by Quran. Allah explains some ayat verses by other verses. Quran is explained by hadith. And Quran is also explained by a statement of the companion. And then Quran is also explained by the grammar of the Arabic language, which, by the way, that's last, many of the scholars say. Don't try to explain the Quran based on the Arabic grammar without the other ayat that Allah revealed or the authentic hadith of the Prophet ﷺ or the statement of the companions, which nobody disagrees about. You put the Arabic language first. Many people went astray. Because they put the Quran, the Sunnah, the statement of the companion last. They're going to explain it only by what it means linguistically. Look. So the point here, the Prophet ﷺ, in this hadith where he mentioned that that person who dies, Gashun, he has yani, shucking his responsibility he will not go to the Jannah. Allah will prohibit many of the ulama that use the ayat in the Quran to, they said, to make it particular to a particular thing. And not that if you do some sin, including not fulfill your responsibilities and oath, you will not go to the paradise absolutely. No, there's a particular restriction here. And that is if you die upon major shirk. Although the ayah doesn't say die, it's understood from other ayah and hadith dying upon major shirk. So the ayah is general. In Allah, Allah, Yaqfira and Yushrika, Yushrika, shirk. That's general. So Sheikh Uthaymin, he says, the next part of the ayah, wa yaqfira maduna dhalika li mayyasha, he said, that part where Allah says he will forgive other than shirk for whomsoever he wills. He says some scholars said that he will forgive, Allah Azza wa Jal will forgive other than you dying on major shirk. Again, we have to include major hypocrisy. We have to include major kufr and major bid'ah like grave worship and tawaf around people's graves. 
is they're on the same level of shirk when you talk about ruling wise and the sin and the implication. She goes, they mean, he said, Allah forgiving you. Some scholars said, Yahtamilu, this ayah could carry the meaning that Allah will only forgive you for sins that you do other than shirk, other than kufr, other than nifat, if it's a sin that does not have a direct punishment tied to it. If that kind of akuba, if there's a punishment tied to that sin, then Shikul Taymin said, many scholars said that this is the thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you for if he wishes. But if there's a major sin, there's a particular punishment that Allah tied to that sin, you got to get that punishment. You got to go to the hellfire first. He said in this, Hada what you kawi. He said, this is a strong position. But still, the point is, the Muslim is going to come out. The Muslim is going to come out. But what we benefit from the scholars who say that this is part of the meaning of this verse, Allah will forgive you if there's a sin that a punishment is not tied to it. Then here, many scholars said these were the minor sins. Like looking at a woman, yani lustfully, minor sin. Or touching the hand of a woman, minor sin. Yeah, many scholars said those are the things that Allah will forgive you for. But that which is tied to like the issue of zina, for example. You got to be stoned. If you don't get stoned, you got to go to the hellfire if you die making zina. You still, they didn't catch you, you got to go to the hellfire. Yani, if you die as a thief stealing. Yani, uh, those that have a akuba, a set punishment tied to it. Because for zina, there's a set punishment. For stealing, there's a set punishment. While Shekel Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, he had a similar position when it came to that. He said, the ayah here is general. We could talk about shirk. Although Ahlul Sunnah, <clears throat> the scholars of the Sunnah, they agree if you're down a major shirk, Allah will forgive you. Minor shirk falls under the category Allah will forgive other than that to whom he wills. That's the general belief of the people of the Sunnah. But Shaykh Islam Taymiyyah, because the ayah is general, it doesn't specify major shirk, minor shirk. Shirk is general. He said, if a person dies on minor shirk, which remember, minor shirk is a major sin. Minor shirk is a major sin. It's not major shirk, it's minor shirk, but it's a major sin. Minor, minor shirk is a major sin, like drinking alcohol is a major sin. Making fornication and adultery is a major sin. Lying is a major sin. Highway robbery is a major sin. Major sins you have to make toba for. You can't make wudu and the major sin washes away what you will do. Minor sins, if you make wudu, the sins wash away. But major sins you got to make toba. So Sheikh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah he said, because the ayah is general, if you die on minor shirk, which again, it's a major sin. Minor shirk meaning you're still a Muslim. Minor shirk, you die on it, you're still a Muslim. Like swearing by other than Allah. That's minor shirk. Saying, I will and Allah will. Minor shirk. You die on that? She was not take me. He said, what happens, Allah is going to bring you on the day of judgment. He going to weigh your good and bad deeds. Now, we're not talking about major shirk. Remember, major shirk you die on it. Everybody agree that's it. Finish. No, no, no forgiveness. No jannah. You're burning in hell forever. May Allah forgive us. I mean. And Muslims be making major shirk. But remember, we said... 
it's possible they have udhr bi jahl. They have an excuse for their ignorance. And we mentioned the hadith about the man who told his children, cremate me when I die. Remember that? Yeah. And then on the death of Judge Prophet said, Allah is going to bring him before him and he's going to ask him, why did you tell your children to cremate you and blow your ashes? They'll say, because I feared you. But the point is, he said, Allah won't be able to bring me back together if you burn my ashes. Ashes. That's a mistake as it relates to the Tawheed. But in that hadith of Salah mentioned, Allah forgave that man because he had fear of Allah's punishment. So while he was right when it came to the fear of Allah's punishment, he was wrong about Allah's ability to bring him back after being burnt. So that point we're saying that major shirk you die on it. And let you have an excuse with Allah. And don't nobody know. That's of the unseen. Don't nobody know who has an excuse with Allah. We might judge a person. But you don't know if Allah is going to bring him on the day of judgment. Examine him. And Allah knows if he's lying. If he's deceitful. If he knew. But he's saying, I didn't know Allah. Allah can forgive him. Like in this hadith. But the person in general die on major shirk. In general, that's it. Unless he has an excuse with Allah. Major shirk, that's it. Minor shirk, then it's just like the other major sins. Drinking, stealing, gambling, like this. Although it's minor shirk, meaning you still remain a Muslim. You do major shirk intentionally. Knowing well that it's major shirk, you leave Islam. You lose your cloak of Islam. And if you die on it, Allah won't forgive you. So we take minor shirk, for example, and all the other sins do the major sins. Minor in shirk mean you remain a Muslim, but major in sin, meaning you got to make toba for, from it. You could be punished for yani, uh, that injunction, minor shirk. You could be punished. Shuslami said, on the day of judgment, Allah is going to bring you. He's going to bring your good deeds and your bad deeds. It said if the person good deeds is more than his bad deeds, then this is the person that falls on the side of the ayat. Allah will forgive all the other sins to whom he wishes other than the one who died on major shirt. Then you go to Jannah. He said, but if Allah weigh your deeds on the day of judgment, may Allah have mercy on us. Amen. And your bad deeds are more than your good deeds. And Shaykh Islam imitate me. He said, then that is the person that Allah will forgive. He got to do his time on the hellfire and then come out. And that's the one Shaykh Islam imitate me. <clears throat> when he mentioned that, Imam Ibn Uthaymin, he said, that's a strong position. Because the eye is general. While most of Ahlul Sunnah, past and present from the scholars, they say, only major shirk, Allah won't forgive you, die on it. But here, Shaykh Islam Taymiyyah is teaching us, be afraid of sin. The lesson we learn from those scholars who say it could mean Allah will only forgive you if you do a sin that's not major shirk and a sin that's a major sin, but it doesn't have a particular punishment to it. This encourages you to stay away from sin. This encourage you, watch what you do as a Muslim. Don't rely on, well, you know, uh, uh, you know, Allah forgive me. No. Don't be extreme and think everything is Allah won't forgive me, Allah won't forgive me like the shaitan. Don't despair. But don't count on his mercy. Well, I can do whatever I want because he's going to forgive me. I'm going to Jannah. Be in the middle. Be in the middle. Hoping Allah will forgive you so you keep doing the good deeds. And from good deeds, one of the type of good deeds, staying away from bad deeds. A lot of the Muslims that take, yani, doing disobedient, very light. Very light. Especially in the time where we see sins are running rampant. There should be more encouragement for us to get on poor Nadim. It should be more encouragement for us to stay away from fawahish, that which is yeah, I mean, indecencies and, 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 and sexual you know, crimes. 
all type of lewdness. It should be more of an a, a, a encouragement for us to not wrong one another, transgress the limits. Well, Lord, we wrong one another as human beings. It should be more of, a, of an encouragement for us to leave all types of shirt, the major and the minor. Especially if we look at what Sheikh Islam Taymiyyah is saying. The minor shirk is inclusive in the ayat. Allah won't forgive you. Meaning, if you do minor shirk, you got to be punished. You don't go right to the Jannah. That's just strong evidence. So I could do minor shirk. It ain't major, ah. Really? Because Allah, he said, he'll forgive, you know, everything other than major shirk. So I'm straight. For real? Don't play like that. Be serious about the religion. And speaking about the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we conclude. Ibn Qayyim al-Jawziyah he mentioned one of his famous books <clears throat> he mentioned one of his favorite books and he was talking about the great crime of speaking without knowledge. He said that speaking without knowledge, a'dham in the shirk. Now most of the time, we don't hear anything except nothing is greater than shirk. Like Allah said in the Surah Al-Luqman, in the shirk al-dhulmun azim. Verily shirk is of the most greatest wrongs you can do. But listen to this, 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 this fiqh of Ibn Qayyim al -Jawziyah. He said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in his noble book in the Quran إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّ الْفَوَاحِشِ Indeed, my Lord has prohibited all type of indecencies. وَالْبَغِي وَالْإِثْمِ غَيْرِ عِلْمِ And transgressing the bounds and oppressing one another. Ill, meaning you have no right to do so. Allah didn't allow this in the religion. Where you get this from? Ill. And to make shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in which Allah did not allow you or give you the okay to make shirk with him. So, the last part of the ayah we're going to leave because there's one more thing that's in this ayah. If you go back to the beginning, the first part of the ayah, إِنَّمَا حَرَمَا إِنَّمَا إِنَّمَا حَرَمَا إِنَّمَا حَرَمَا رَبِّ إِنَّمَا حَرَمَا رَبِّ إِنَّمَا حَرَمَا عَلَيْكُمْ No, إِنَّمَا حَرَمَا رَبِّ إِنَّمَا حَرَمَا رَبِّ فَوَاحِش فَوَاحِش Most scholars that say فَوَاحِش means a zina, illegal intercourse. But some scholars say it means all type of lewd, abominable deeds. Then you have wal ithm wal baghi bighayri ilm. Naam. 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 Ithm. Yani sins. And baghi. Transgressing the bounds. Like, you know, fighting and killing. That's greater than just doing illegal intercourse. Ithm wal baghi. Like in the case of Ali ibn Abi, Abi Talib, when they went after the Khawarij during his time, they were Muslim. They were from the deviant groups. And Ali ordered that they be killed because the Prophet said, during his lifetime, when you see these people, he told the companions, kill them. And they were Muslim. But because the only way to stop the bloodshed of these people was to penalize them by death. That's what he left for the government of the Muslims when those people reared their head. So when you take that second part of the ayat, Ithm wal baghi, and he transgression against the Muslim, making the Muslim blood lawful. As Ali, when he was asked about them, he said, Were they monafiqeen? Were the Khawarij hypocrites? Because you know, how the Muslim going to fight the Muslim? Shed the blood of the other Muslim. Ali, he said, no, they weren't munafiqeen. Because Allah said about the munafiqeen, وَلَا يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا The munafiqeen, they only remember Allah a little bit. 
They pray lazily. They really don't want to give charity. You know, they do when people are around. When they know people are around, they don't do. But the Khawarij, the prophet, described them. They was outdoing the companions, the prophet said, in fasting. They had yani, a lot of yani, charity and reading Quran and making dhikr. And by the way, this was not the prophet praising them. But he was showing how a people can have all of these great virtues and still be astray. Still be astray. Ali, he said, no, they weren't hypocrites. They had too much worship, too much iman. The prophet described them from revelation. They're not hypocrites. He said, well, I can bagaw ala ikhwani him. But they transgressed against their brothers, meaning they made our blood lawful. If it was buggy, the second thing, sin and transgressing against the Muslim, the honor of the Muslim, the wealth of the Muslim. And making shirk with Allah wa ta'ala. So if we go backwards, you got shirk, that's the greatest. Then after that, sin and transgressing against the Muslim, killing the Muslim. Then you got al fawahish, which is the least of those three categories. The last thing in this ayat, and this is why Ibn Qayyim al Jawzi he said, singing about Allah Tabaraku wa Ta'ala, what is not from the religion is greater than shirk, because Allah after shirk, which is the greatest major sin, as this is part of the lesson today, Allah said, Wa taqulu ala Allahi ma la ta'alamun. And that you say about Allah's deen, that you say about Allah's religion, that you say about Allah's book, that you say about Allah's messenger, that which you have no knowledge of. SubhanAllah. Because this is how the shirk came. Somebody spoke without knowledge. Allah musta'an. So what's the point? This in itself, if you go back and look at this hadith, Yawman Yamutu Hu Agashun, the Ratihi, Hawam Allah Alihi Jannah, the day when that person died, he didn't keep his, his promise, his responsibility, his oath, and he had the ability to. That hadith is serious. And it shows you that the Muslim won't be in the whole fire forever. Don't take that understanding, even though you read that hadith. The Muslim will come out. As it's been proven. The Muslim won't burn in the hell fire forever. The disbeliever, the pagan, the mushrik, the kafir, the one who denies Allah and knows better, the hypocrite, the monafic, outwardly showing Islam, he disbelieves inside his heart. And Allah knows that disbelief only. They're going to be in the hell fire forever. But is it worth the Muslim? Is it worth the Muslim taking a chance, disobeying Allah to Baraka wa Ta'ala? Thinking that Allah will forgive him, he may fall under the category, Yani, uh, 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 Allah will forgive whoever he wants, whoever doesn't die on major shirk. It's not worth it. Allah is not worth it. So, this hadith, Allah subhanahu wa Ta'ala knows best. Has so many benefits. Lastly, from amongst it, from amongst it, yani, uh, 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 the belief of the Jannah wa Nar. Because you see in this hadith, the Prophet said, "Haram alayhi Jannah," that that person won't go straight to the Jannah if he's a Muslim, and if he breaks his breaches his responsibility and he's a mushrik, then he won't never go to the Jannah. So this shows that the Jannah was created and around while the Prophet was alive. Not like some of those deviant groups from the Muslims said, no, there's no paradise, there's no Jannah right now. There's no Nar, no hellfire right now. Allah is going to create on the day of judgment. He don't have a need for it now. SubhanAllah. How can you say that? Who gives you the right? These type of hadith illustrate for us the belief in the hellfire, the belief in the Jannah. al an with him stuck bill now and later. Not we don't believe in it now, it don't exist, but on the day of judgment is gonna exist, Allah is gonna create it. No. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit us by the likes of this small hadith that you can see has so much benefit from amongst it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us those who uphold to the best of their ability the responsibility that which Allah has given you as a 
blessing and an honor, responsibility, that which yani, comes with reward, that which comes with punishment. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those that we die on the day we die, not being those who betray the responsibility. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who repent if we make that sin before we die. Because if you make toba, then Allah tabarakhu wa ta'ala tab ila man, yani, yutubu Allah ila man, tab. Allah will forgive those who make sincere repentance so you don't have to worry about it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who avoid all of the major sins, those who avoid the major shirk, those who avoid the major sins. We ask Allah to bless us to avoid the minor shirk, which is a major sin. We ask Allah to, wa ta'ala to keep us from all of the major and minor sins. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify us, to make us die the death of the righteous, to increase us in knowledge, to increase us in the right belief, to increase us in the way of the Prophet Sallallahu and his companions and those great generations that came after them carrying the flag of Islam. Wa sallallahu sallam baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa sallam taslim in kithira wa alhamdulillah wa bil alameen. Subhanaka Allahum wa bihamdika shalom wa la ilaha illahu wa astakun wa tubu alayk. Inshallah the next class will be inshallah ta'ala Thursday after Salat al Isha, Zakma Lakhir. Yakum. <laughs>